Modern merfolk is constantly adapting, taking on many different forms, with similar play patterns and card pools. Finding the right build for you may take some time, but in this video, I'll be going over some of the most popular variations of modern merfolk and deciding which one I think is best suited for the modern metagame. With all that said, let's get into the video. So let's start this conversation off by talking about mono blue merfolk. Monoblue Merfolk has been around for years, receiving multiple upgrades over time. The list is constantly changing, but it has consistently played cards like Silver Gill Adept, Master of the Pearl Trident, and more. This is a mid-range deck with a lot of interaction and tempo. Our best forms of creature-based interaction is Merfolk Trickster, Tide Shaper, Harbinger of the Tides, and Subtlety. Merfolk Trickster has a plethora of uses, and at its worst, it just is a grizzly bear with flash, which isn't even that bad. Tide Shaper can interact with our opponent's lands, it can kill an Ursa Saka, and it grants us Island Walk when combined with a Lord. Harbinger of the Tides being able to bounce a Merged Regent or a Rhino token makes it very relevant, but only 35% of Merfolk decks make room for it. This is because most of the time, Brazen Barner will perform better. Subtlety is not a Merfolk, but it offers more means of interaction. It is sometimes played in the main deck, but it is also played in the sideboard. Subtlety is a great inclusion since it provides great tempo and can temporarily deal with a threat like a Merktide Regent, Yog Moth, Primeval Titan, and more. Merfolk has more means of interacting with counter spells like Forest negation, spell pierce, and counterspell. To say the least, Monobloom Merfolk has plenty of interaction, which is necessary to compete with the metagame. This is definitely a list to keep in mind as we dive into other variations of modern Merfolk. So let's talk about the Simic Utopia Sprawl list. This variation of Merfolk is interesting, but is seeing fringe play compared to other Merfolk lists. The whole idea of this deck is to play Utopia Sprawl on turn 1, then you can play a Mirror Retreat on turn 2. This leads to a lot of mana which you can use for a collected company or more creatures. Although this deck shares a lot of cards with the mono blue build, they perform quite differently. Simic Merfolk lists are aggro and tend to play faster, while mono blue Merfolk lists tend to perform as a mid-range deck. It is more about tempo rather than speed. This list is interesting, but doesn't it have enough interaction to deal with the metagame? This is definitely a list to keep in mind, but mono blue Merfolk is better suited for the modern metagame at the moment. So this next variation of Merfolk is hard to call Merfolk. This deck has more Fairies main deck than it does Merfolk. The only Merfolk in this deck is Swayloon and Tide Shaper in the sideboard. Now the idea of this deck is to function as a control deck that wins in the late game. This list has a lot of counter magic between 4 force negation and 4 counter spells main deck and 3 deprives in the sideboard. The deck has 4 chalice of the void which can be back breaking for our opponents. Spreading seas is run as a 4 up to deal with Urza Saga and other pesky lands. Brazen Barner can deal with any permanent that is resolved. Salty can slow any creature or planeswalker that our opponents have played. Dismember can deal with a turn 1 threat like Ravagon and Dragon Race Chandler. Vandillion Quick can sing in the air and offer good disruption. Now, in the mana base of the deck, there's a lot of utility lands, the only colorless one being Blast Zone, which is another way to deal with low CMC permanence of our opponents. There is Hall of the Storm Giants and Fairy Conclave to act as late game win conditions. Autowara can bounce threats in the land slot. Tide Shaper is extra land hate in the sideboard if we need it. And in the sideboard, there's Relic of Progenis for Graveyard Hate and Ratchet Bomb to deal with crash footfalls and low curve decks. This deck is well suited, but I think we need more results. And I don't even know if I would classify this as Merfolk. Now let's discuss Azorius Blink Merfolk. This variation of Merfolk made 5-0 in a modern league. This build splashes white for several cards, but the main reason for the splash is for Ephemerate. The deck is built to take as much advantage as possible with the Femrite, since 16 out of the 27 creatures in the deck have an Enter the Battlefield effect. Those creatures are Silvergill Adept, Merfolk Trickster, Master of Waves, and Harbinger of the Tides. Since Ephemerite blinks creatures, any spell targeting your creature can be countered with an Ephemerite. In this deck, Ephemerite can be played for value or defensively. This deck only plays 4 Lord effects, being Master of the Pearl Trident, but it still pushes through for damage easily, especially with Master of Waves. The deck also plays Prismatic Ending, since it is one of the best removal spells in white. In the sideboard, Graveyard Heat ranges from Relic of Progenitus to Rest in Peace. Recent variants are testing Teferi in the sideboard, and I think this is quite interesting. Teferi is meant to help in the Cascade matchups. Overall, this deck is very unique. 
but I think it needs more testing and results. This list is fairly new and is still being tweaked. I think before I can have a set opinion, we need to give this list some time. If it becomes popular, I will talk about it in another video. Let's go over Yorion Merfolk. So these lists cram 20 extra cards so they can play Yorion as their companion. Other than that, the list looks like a typical mono blue Merfolk deck, with a few extra cards of course, like Bentic Biomancer, Curse Catcher, Master of Waves, Spell Pierce, and a few others. This list basically asks, do you want Yorion? In a local metagame, you would need to know how often you were grinding in the late game. How often do you run out of resources? If oftentimes the game ends and you have cards in hand, then you probably don't need Yorion. But if the game ends and you have no cards in your hand and you have little to do in the late game, then Yorion might not be a bad inclusion. Now, if you're playing in a league or in an event, then just try to look at the results. Non-Yorion decks do far better. At the moment, Mono Blue lists seem to be the most successful, and justifying Yorion would be odd, yet it is not a bad playtest. So the best build of Merfolk at the moment is Mono Blue, but how do we build it? This definitely depends on your local meta, but I will explain what I would bring to an event. Let's start by talking about how to adapt your deck to your local metagame. Now, certain cards you should run as four of regardlessly, such as Master the Pearl Trident, Merfolk Trickster, Silver Gill Adept, Saluna Sea and Sky, Tide Shaper, Lore of Atlantis, and Aether Vial. Glass Pool Mimic seems to be great as a three of with 19 lands. Some Merfolk lists opt to run two dismembers over Spreading Seas. Locally, this depends. If you often play against Murktide, then play Dismember over Spreading Seas. The same applies if you play against Ravagon often. Yet, if not, I would play two Spreading Seas main deck and two Dismembers in the sideboard. I would play four Salty's main deck, but if you play against Hammer Time, Burn, Living End, and Crashing Footfalls more often than Murktide, Yawgmoth, and Amulet Titan, then I could see trimming some copies and moving it to the sideboard. Force Negation is best as a 4 of, but if Murktide and Death Shadow are popular at your LGS, then you can trim some copies. As I said earlier, you will want 19 lands. Successful mana bases run 10 islands, 4 muta vaults, 2 waterlogged groves, 2 auto water soaring cities, and 1 cavernous souls. If control is heavy in your meta, you can up the number of cavernous souls. And for your local metagame sideboard, I would suggest watching my sideboard toolbox video and deciding which cards you think are the best cards for your own sideboard. Let's talk about what I would bring to an event or for a league. We would still run 4 Master the Pearl Trident, 4 Merfolk Trickster, 4 Silver Gill Adept, 4 Sweet Lunacine Sky, 4 Tide Shaper, 4 Lore of Atlantis, and 4 Aether Vial, since those are staples of the deck. I would keep the mana base as described, with 3 Glass Pool Mimics and 19 lands, 10 being Islands, 4 being Muta Vaults, 2 Waterlogged Groves, 2 Water Water Soaring City, and 1 Cavernous Souls. Subtlety works well as a 4 of in most Merfolk clubs. I would still run Force Negations, and picking two Spreading Seas or Dismember main deck is challenging. But recent lists run Dismember over Spreading Seas. I think this change is good, but I would still run Spreading Seas as a two of in the sideboard. For your sideboard, I could see you going two ways. The first way is with two Chalice of the Void, two Hercules Recall, three pieces of Graveyard Hate, most likely Relka Progenus or Unlicensed Hearse, and maybe one Graph Digger's Cage, two Brazen Barners, two Kiras, and two Spell Pierces. I could see you playing Flusterstorm over Spell Pierce, yet I still think Spell Pierce has a small edge. Another way to build your sideboard is by emphasizing on Chalice of the Void. You could run four Chalice of the Void, three Unlicensed Hearse, two Brazen Barners, and instead of running two Spell Pierces, you could run Spell Stutter Sprite, but you don't have to. You would run two Kiras and two Spreading Seas. If you emphasize on Chalice of the Void, then you can make room for some extra cavernous souls, yet I find that that might not be necessary. I will have both these linked in the description below, and I hope you enjoyed my analysis on these Merfolk lists. I hope to see you in the next video.